The Asset Browser is a powerful tool where you can bring in previously made assets, for example game objects or materials, and drag and drop them into your scenes. In this video, I'm going to break down the Asset Browser, which can be a little bit tricky to understand when you first try and use it. So I'll be approaching it from a beginner's perspective and give a general outline, along with some of the pitfalls that you might come up against. If you like what I do, then do check out my website and the playlist on this channel for more great content. Okay, so I'm in the default general scene here. My screencast keys are down the corner here and the Asset Browser is available in 3.0. So make sure you have the latest version of Blender. As tradition dictates, I'll delete my default cube and shift A to add, mesh and monkey. So there's a fantastic monkey head that I've made all by myself. So I'm very proud of this and I want to be able to use it as an asset in other Blender files. And this of course can be any asset you've made. So first of all, we'll want to tell Blender where to put our assets. And you'll probably want to create a separate folder for that. In order to do that, we can go up to Edit, Preferences, and down to File Paths and Asset Library here. I put all my Blender files into a Blender folder and I've created an asset folder within that. And you can of course choose that folder for yourself here, create a new folder for your assets to go. Do make sure that's saved, so you should have auto save preferences on by default. With that ticked, you can close it down. So now I can save this wonderful monkey head that I've made in my asset browser to use nice and quickly in my other scenes. To define this as an asset, there's two simple ways. I can come up to the outliner, right click on it and mark as asset. That's probably the easiest way. And you can see it's got this sort of book icon here as if it's a library and within your library. The other way is to go up to object and asset, mark as asset there. You can of course clear your asset as well. So now that I've done that, let's take a look at the asset browser. I'll just bring up this window here, which is the timeline, come across and change it to my asset browser there. And you can see there's Suzanne. I can rename this as monkey I made and you can see it update in there. And I'll just zoom out of touch and see that you can drag it in now. And the great thing is it sticks to the floor like this. It even sticks to objects as well. So I can put it on my original monkey like so. So it's a very powerful tool in that sense, especially for things like a room where you've got tables and chairs and pictures to hang on the wall. It's very effective. I'll just delete that monkey. Now the problem is, and this is the bit where it gets a bit confusing, is that this is only in my current file, this asset that I've got here. So you can see current file there. If I click on this drop down, there's user library here. If I click on that, it isn't in there. And that's the user library I set up hoping that my assets would go into. Well, the problem is this Blender file with the monkey in is not in that folder in my assets folder. So Blender can't see it and therefore bring it in from my assets folder. However, if I go to file save as and actually put it within my Blender assets folder, so I'll call this monkey asset and save it. Now you can see it suddenly appears in my user library. So not only the current file just there, but the user library as well. So now let's go to file new, bring up this window, change it to the asset browser. The current file has nothing in it, but if I go to my user library, there is my monkey that I can bring in to this new file. So any asset that you want to use has to be saved in a blend file that's within your assets folder. That's probably the most confusing thing and you'll want to play with that a little bit to get used to it. What I would recommend is if you've got lots of separate files with different assets that you want to use, I would append them all into one file and then save that within your assets folder and organize the assets that way. You can also set up materials as well. So if I go across to the shading tab and I'll pull this out and I'll change this to the asset browser, you'll want to press T to bring up the tools menu here. Let's create a material on this object. So I'll create a very simple gold material so across the yellow, metallic all the way up, roughness all the way down, and call it gold. I can right click in the name and mark as asset, or you can come across to slots, right click there, mark as asset, or under the materials, you can right click here, mark as asset, right click up here, mark as asset. So there's lots of places you can mark your assets when they're materials. So let's do that, mark as asset, there's my gold material. However, this material will not appear in my user library. Have a quick think why that is. That's because this Blender file is not in my assets folder. So file, save as, here's my asset folder and I call this materials. And then I can put lots of materials in here and save them. So save, now you can see it jumped into my user library and I can start using it. And I can click and drag it onto objects and you can see a golden monkey. One last thing, if I go to layout mode and delete the default cube and bring in another monkey, so shift A, mesh 
and then monkey. I'm not using one of these because they're already an asset that I've brought in. So you can see this is Suzanne and those are the monkeys I made myself. If I rotate this around the x-axis as if it's sitting on the floor, let's just go to side view and line that up. So somewhere around there. And I want to save this one as an asset so that it comes in with that rotation. If I press N on my keyboard and go up to item, you can see it's got some rotation there. However, I need to apply this rotation if I want this to come in sitting on the floor as it is instead of standing up like this. For that, I'll need to press Control A and apply the rotation. Now you can see this is all set to zero. That means when I set this one as an asset, let's do that now, right click, mark as asset, monkey rotate. Now you can see that in my asset library, when I click and drag it in, you can see that it comes in with a rotation of zero as these ones have as well. That's why you need to apply that rotation that you've made. Otherwise it will cancel it out when it brings it in. So there you have it, an introduction to the asset browser. There's certainly more you can do with this, but hopefully you can see from this what a powerful tool it can be and this takes away any confusion. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.